welcome to Almost 30. Hello guys, how's it going? <laughs> What's happening everyone? We are end of October. What the fuck? I know, huge. <laughs> what the fuck? But I kind of like, we're making it. Okay, mm-hmm. we're here. <laughs> Any Halloween plans? <laughs> Dude, I thought about that the other day. Just how, first of all, I'm an OG Halloween hater. Mm. For You've my been whole doing life. it before. It was cool. For my whole life. For sure. I just don't. It's satanic. But I also, <laughs> <laughs> but I also love, it's kind of like at a wedding when you don't want to dance at a wedding and yes. you love sitting down and watching people dance and have fun. But if you dance, you have fun. For sure. That's not the point, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's like you watch them have fun and you're having a great time sitting. Mm-hmm. Same with Halloween. I love watching people dress up. I think it's creative. I think it's cool. I just don't want to do it myself. Yeah. Ever. I don't want to put on clothes ever. So it's hard for me to yeah. think about. Uh, my clothes game is is wow. So to think about putting time over normal clothes that I should be wearing instead of Justin's clothes <laughs> into costumes that I would wear once a day. I was thinking about in college, it's like I would have $50 to spend in my account and I would buy a $50 yeah. nurse, That's the nurse way. outfit. That's the way. Or I would I would literally have $50 in my account in New York at, at some points. Like it got very real. And I'd be like, should I take Soul sex Cycle tomorrow? I mean, <laughs> 100%. Paychecks Friday. I was wearing a nurse costume Thursday. in high school. Okay. <laughs> Someone sit me down. <laughs> Give me a talk. Give me a talk about my sexual activities. I was the milk mustache campaign. That's a good one. That's a good one, right? That's dope. So like when I do do Halloween, it's pretty cool. When I do it, it's actually funny and cool. And I'm actually the cool girl. <laughs> you saying that your your wardrobe is not on point. I realized that more than ever for me when I was in New York. I literally... I, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm wearing, like, terry cloth shorts that go down to my knees. And it's not even Sean's. They're actually mine. And oversized everything, beanie. And I loved it. I mean, it's the best. <laughs> I actually felt more like me than ever. Yeah, how was being in New York? Um, it was It was really good. Overall, like, super good to see Sean. It was just nice to, like, have that time together. The man puts puts us on a serious schedule of, of seeing know. friends. It's, it's Oh, friends. I was thinking of work schedule because he works so much. Oh, he works so much. Yeah. He definitely works a lot. Um, but all of a sudden, and I love him for this, but it was like, oh, yeah, we're going to see uh, so-and-so in a couple hours. I was like, Sean is me. Oh. I was like, okay. And then I was like, can I say that I don't want to go anywhere? I was like, yeah, I totally can. But, like, I also was like, okay, this is nice to, like, see people and we're able to be outside because it's not fucking 32 degrees yet. Like, let's just take advantage. Um, but you know what? Getting my steps in every day <sighs> made my world. For real. God, and we could do that here in L.A., but there's something about walking in New York where I can literally be in five completely different neighborhoods in an hour walk. And it's so interesting. It's so fun walk to the water like walk to I just I loved it I was that's all I did I didn't work out I just walked everywhere all the time and it felt really really good walking's the best I missed I missed it I know this morning at my workout is outside but it's like um like a mile 1.2 away mm. did you get a, um a picnic basket as an influencer gift no so I, I would love one, though. Yo, hilarious. Hello? So I love that brands are being creative. We got a piece of art recently. I got a picnic basket, and I come home, and there's this fucking picnic basket on my table. And then there's the brand product in there, and there's all this, like, picnic gear. And then it's 6 in the morning. I flip to the other door of the little picnic basket with the blanket coming out. It's, like, wicker. And there's this box, and I'm like, oh, fuck. I know what this is going to be, a treat. Uh-oh. Six in the morning, <laughs> and I'm like, "Are you going to open up the box? Assuming it's a treat? Oh yes, it was a pound cake. Bye bye." So I was about Uh-oh. literally on my way out the door to walk to my workout. Sat down, had some pound cake at six fucking a.m. Oh wow, are you okay? It was <laughs> amazing. I literally thought to myself, "I'm like, this is like as if I was eating a piece of breakfast bread." <laughs> 
Like I was like, this is like my morning. Bread. I fucking love a pound cake, dude. So it was no hate moist as fuck. But at six a.m., I'm like, it's just I, like I don't even know what to do at six a.m. My brain turns off. Yeah, honestly, I left my body. I literally <laughs> left my fucking body. You're like ready to do sprints. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> and then I had to drive to class. I was like, oh, this is what happens in like the road to un- unhealth is you do the first step of like the cake at 6 a.m. And then the second step is driving to the workout. That's literally walking distance. <laughs> oh, I- and then, of course, you know, you had to do the classic stuff the cake in the trash so you don't continue to like house pour water on it i i literally was like that's so funny i thought about that i'm like oh i should probably fucking pour ketchup on this cake so i don't eat it and i was like no Mm -hmm. i've grown up i'll just throw it away and i trust that i will not go in the trash again dude i remember the days when i would i would return to the trash oh big facts yeah, that was He's in New York. scooping up stuff in the trash all day. I'd be Big like facts. wasted and like, hmm, I, th- I know I throw out a loaf of bread earlier. Mm-hmm. So disgusting. But so hey, that's s- real. Sun healthy. <laughs> Sun healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Eating disorder in action. <laughs> Holy moly. Uh, well, we hope you're all doing well. We know it's kind of one of those uh, really challenging times. But hopefully you can find some humor mm-hmm. in, in the way that we're we're adapting um and we have some things for you that hopefully will support you before we get into this episode we do have some incredible workshops coming up yeah in our new paradigm series. really excited so the healer that Lindsay and i've been working with this entire year kiki robinson um, we did an instagram live with her on tarot we're going to be doing introduction to tarot so understanding how to work and use a tarot deck and then introduction to channeling So with a lot of amazing tarot readers, they're able to channel messages from source. So with the best in the game, like I've seen 400 million people in this space, she's my number one. We have a really powerful workshop with her. And then we actually have a really beautiful session with Josie of Eleven Healing, Mm -hmm. who did a womb awakening workshop with us in Malibu last year. She's Milana Snow's healer out of London. We met her when we were in London and she actually does something really profound called light language. And it is the transmission of vibrational frequency of like a higher dimension and it comes out in this very interesting way but it's super powerful so she's a sound healer she does womb awakening she does um, light language and energy healing and she's really powerful so that's going to be a more uh, receptive healing session with her that's going to be really really beautiful and then we have Mm Ngozi yeah and Ngozi we actually did a we did a live with her um, not too long ago, and this one is going to be really unique. We've never done a workshop like this before, so uh, Ngozi is a writer. So we're going to be working on poetic medicine, and I know if any of you are like me, and I know Krista relates to it, sometimes you sit down to write or journal and things like that, and you're like, oh my God, I can't do it. Um, so we're going to work on journaling and healing, really kind of tying those two things together, bringing in just authenticity and self-love and the way that we express ourselves through writing. Um, She's a life coach and writer, as I said, and she's just super, super powerful. So we're going to create a really uh, solid container for us to go deep and really vulnerable um, in this particular workshop. Yep. And then we have our last one with Jenna Reese. It's on breathwork. So Jenna Reese did a beautiful breathwork session at our Malibu retreat last year that cracked every one open she has a really powerful method that she uses and this workshop's called reclaiming radical love a breathwork and meditation workshop so we're going to be doing breathwork and be really working with jenna on unblocking a lot of you know the trauma the energy that sticks within us through breathwork so amazing workshops coming up almost 30.com you can go to the new paradigm digital series for all of those workshops and then go to the shop page if you want to pick up any of the workshops that we've already hosted maybe it's on sex and body image or anxiety or energy healing or plant medicine we have really powerful beautiful workshops in our shop and if you're a podcaster out there we have so many resources to support you with our courses and workbooks downloadables templates etc you can go to yourpodcastpro.com we're currently uh, working with a small group of current podcasters who are in our six-week accelerator to grow and monetize and it's been a blast yeah we love them we can't wait to introduce you to them soon if we have not already they are a diverse powerful group of future number one 
top podcasters. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's so true. Um, okay. On today's episode, we have Radhi Devlukia Shetty. Radhi is, if you hear her last name, Shetty, Jay Shetty's wife, but she is just an incredible human being. Uh, if you follow her on Instagram, you will see her just Ayurvedic knowledge coming through her positivity, her mindfulness, consciousness with the way in which she just kind of navigates her every day. And it's really refreshing. And um, I just had so much fun. I I actually, going into this conversation, my intention was just to be super curious about her as a human rather than like, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Um, And it just flowed. It flowed really well. She is so magnetic, Mm -hmm. beautiful. Her style was unreal, (laughs) the most inspiring style. But she really is just this beautiful divine feminine, like this creator energy. And I loved that we got to talk about Ayurveda. We got to talk about relationships. We got to talk about finding purpose, what she does when she's, you know, feeling low or could be in a rut. And we really run the gamut of topics that we normally talk about here on Almost 30 in health, wellness, and spirituality. And I really think that you guys are just going to really love first listening to this conversation with a beautiful light like her. Her, but also really going to get a lot out of it. Yeah. Follow her on Instagram if you do not already. She's the most I fun. I say that because she's just so funny and she's someone I look to if I'm needing inspiration to just continue. Social media can be weird, right? Just continue to be yourself. And I think she does that every single day day yeah she's a true joy and if you love her you probably love jay you did an interview with jay um about a month or so ago which is so good one of Mm -hmm. the best so you can listen to that episode with jay shetty now as well on almost 30 thank you all for listening as always and if this episode just lands with you and uh, you got the feels pass it on to a friend that would mean the world to us and just so you have our episodes every single week in your podcast inbox they're out on Tuesdays and Thursdays you can subscribe on Apple podcasts uh, and rate and review if you're called to we appreciate you we appreciate you so much almost 30 podcast on all socials I'm at it's Krista I'm at Lindsay Simsick yes we love you so much we'll see you on the other side love you What have you guys learned about, you know, relationships and just being so close together and not being able to do things like your trips or travel? Good question. Um, This has been, well, just as it's been the longest time I've been away from my family, this has been the longest time me and Jay and our entire relationship have spent in one go together, ever. And um, usually, especially in the first two years of our marriage, we were not in the same place together for more than a month and a half at a time because either he was traveling or I was traveling. And um, that has been incredible, actually. It's been so wonderful. We really enjoy spending time together, but when we're away, we're like, okay, cool, we'll speak once a day. Let's get on with our lives. Like, we need to get this done. Um, And neither of us are expecting each other to like call or message. We know we would if we could. Um, But being able to just be around each other constantly has just allowed us to appreciate each other so much more. It also showed us like, maybe parts where we still need to grow together a lot more too but um, all in all it's been so much like so much better than I thought it would be like everyone's like oh you're just trapped in like one place with one person I'm like actually it's been so beautiful to do that Mm -hmm. because I feel like we did did a lot of the work that we needed to do to create a relationship where that was a good space for us to be in before before that which made this much easier whereas I feel like if we hadn't done that work for the past like two three years that would have been really yeah, so it's not like you're enjoying the fruits of your labor. Exactly. Literally, it's yeah. like a little honeymoon. Yeah. I'm not experiencing the same, but yeah. <laughs> so, but it's been fine. It's been interesting. Um, so how did you create that? Like, what was the work you guys put in before that has made this so, like, so marvelous? Yeah, yeah um, I'd say so when we were dating, we spent a lot of time mainly around my family because, as I said, I'm a bit obsessed with them. Um, but we didn't, we spent a lot of time together too. But I reckon when we got married, it was obviously the time where we had so many changes. Like we moved to New York straight away. And that was just me and him. I didn't know anybody there. It was just us two. He was working a lot. I was at home because I couldn't work um, at the time in America. And so it was kind of like we both were in a space where, where which was so unfamiliar. Mm-hmm. And so with unfam- with, I feel that when things are unfamiliar, things end up feeling a lot scarier. And then the worst of you kind of comes out. And I definitely think New York was that for us. We both noticed so many things about ourselves, um, how we were reacting in our relationship, how we were not 
not at all speaking each other's love languages in any way mm. like we were getting it wrong so bad and that was causing us to drift apart so much and we got to a point where we were just like okay we could be in this relationship and be mediocre and core cool. like we we definitely were we weren't at a place where we hated each other we weren't at a place where we couldn't stand each other but we were at a place where we weren't as happy as we could be and so we were like okay we literally had a conversation we were like this could be mediocre and we could continue with this for the rest of our lives for 30 years 40 years being completely mediocre or we have a choice right now where we can start putting in the effort to understand one another better, to try and shed our bad ha negative habits that we're either carrying from seeing other relationships in our lives or in relationships that we've been in. Um, and we chose that option. And we just it just meant we had to observe each other more. We had to take that extra second every time we were speaking to one another to think, how does she or how does he actually mm -hmm. appreciate me saying this? Mm -hmm. How will he respond to this better? For example, this is like a very small version, small thing, but it used really annoyed me when he would leave his shoes out, not because shoes at the door and like just scruffy and like leave everything around. And in my mind, I explained to him that that was because I felt, who else are you expecting to pick that up? Because if you're not doing it, that in my mind means you are expecting me to do that, which makes me feel disrespected. And in his mind, when he explained it to me, he said, it's absolutely not that. It's that I don't have the time and energy with all the other things that I'm doing to then have to think about that concept of picking up my shoes and I putting them him. away. I love him. <laughs> like, That's and, amazing. And it's got nothing to do with me disrespecting. Yes. I don't expect you to do it. I don't expect you to clean my plate. I don't mm -hmm. expect you to pick up my shoes. But I would appreciate it if you allowed me the time till the end of the day to do that. And actually, when we... I took the time and that was such a small example yeah. but something small like that can be like if you're really annoyed at that person through all the random small small bits that one thing you could want to chop their Ooh, head off it compounds over time and yeah and so just the, the ability to explain to each other so now when he leaves stuff around it makes me feel like oh i love him enough to just pick it up because i know he's so busy yes. and i know it's not a disrespect to me yes. and that's what it is it's knowing that that person's not doing things to disrespect you which i feel like most of the time it's either you don't feel heard or you feel disrespected and so we had to read through all of those things that made us feel that way. I wasn't speaking his love language. I'm acts of service constantly. So me cooking for you is like, I love you and I'm pouring my heart into this. Um, and me cleaning up is like, I'm doing something that's, pro that's uh, contributing to this relationship. But for him, it's like, he's not acts of service. He's like quality time and I you know his words of affirmations in some way. And he really likes, you know, me saying and, and appreciating him. Whereas I haven't been like that before. So I think it was really, you know, working our way through all of those things, yeah. which may, which took two years, three years. And then we finally, as quarantine hit, we were like, oh, this is a lot smoother than we thought it was going to be because I guess we've started the work at least. Yeah, I love yeah. that. The reality of our relationships, like so much of it lives in our heads. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's really cool to like have these relationships about what is going on in our heads yeah. so for you to say like hey I actually assume that you would think I would pick that up literally I'm sure 85 light bulbs went off in his yeah. head and he was like oh my god yeah <laughs> so it's just really beautiful that's why you know I think this time is you know as hard it is as it is for a lot of people it's also this gift to just strip away all of the busyness mm. the the noise and actually have really honest conversations about how you're feeling mm -hmm. and it makes you just you know and I, and I know I actually know quite a few people who've broken up during this time yes and I actually think that it's quite it's actually quite liberating to because a lot of the time we fill ourselves with that noise on purpose because it's so scary yeah. to face the reality of whether it is a romantic relationship or a friendship or whatever it is with relationships it's easy to pick out the good which is great which is what we should be doing we should be trying to find like the beauty and everything but at the same time we can fill ourselves with so many other distractions and noise in those relationships that sometimes the bad does outweigh the good mm -hmm. and we're not recognizing it because we're ignoring it and so I actually think it's it's really it's really liberating to be able to strip it all away and face something that's probably fearful and scary, but really see a relationship for what it is. And I think that's the same with friendships too. Yeah, I mean, lots of people have really recognized who's their you know who their close people are to them, and for for the right reasons rather than the wrong ones. For sure. And I just you know in in talking to Jay when he was here, and even just talking to you before the interview, it's it's so cool and um, apparent that you both are so different yeah. but that you balance <laughs> each other out I'm curious yeah. like how how you see that 
in the relationship. We are so different. Like everybody, well, the only thing that people think we are the same is, is people are like, you guys look like brother and sister. <laughs> no, honestly. Like, well, actually, I don't think we do. But yeah, <laughs> no, in personality, we're so different. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, do you feel really um, pressured and like, feel like you have to perform because of how high performing he is? Because he is so, you know, he's someone, and that's purely through his monk training, that he's so attentive, he's so focused. He doesn't waver in like what he wants to do. He's so determined and I'm very different. I sometimes want to do this and I sometimes want to do that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I, every like month I'll be like, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know whether <laughs> it's right or wrong. And, you know, it's actually so beautiful because what what I feel I've experienced in the relationship is an acceptance of the qualities of each other and an appreciation for it. Like I appreciate that about him so mm. much, but at the same time, I don't feel pressured by him to, to be that way. He doesn't expect me to be him and I don't expect him to be me. And actually I think if he was me, our relationship would not work at all. And he, we would, you know, we wouldn't have got as far as we have. And, and if I wasn't, and if he was like me, um, no wait, he was like me and if <laughs> I was like him I think we would butt heads so much yeah. because we need you know it's like water and fire and like you know earth and uh, like you need the stability and you need the frantic and you need the exciting but you also need the grounding and so I think um we've managed it because we both appreciate one another's qualities and we choose to see you know in every single friendship or relationship it's like you can choose to see the differences as things that could separate you or you could choose to see them as something that's so beautiful and so unique about that person. And yes, every quality, like, you know, for him, as det determined as he is, that could also, if he's um, too determined, it can make him frustrated and agitated quite easily. And so I recognize that, but I also have a relationship with him where I can be like, listen, I, I can see you're a bit out of balance right now. Um, you need to do this. Like, we yeah. need, yeah, you need to ground yourself a bit. You need to calm down a bit. You need to slow down a bit because as beautiful as that quality is, it can also be, everything has a good and bad to it. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know whether that answers it. Definitely, that. yes, <laughs> yes. For the, you know, you mentioned love languages, which is, I think so many of us are fans of love languages. Yeah. What is another tool that you guys have used? You know, good besides question. that as like an understanding of the way you guys communicate on, a, on that level? Mm. You know, we're not, uh, oh, another tool that I use is a lot to do with Ayurveda. Um, it's, uh, Ayurveda is actually just this ancient health science in India. It's actually the most ancient health mm -hmm. science to have existed. Have you guys are you guys yeah. quite familiar with it? Yeah. So I relate to him as his elements that he's made up of predominantly. So we all have all elements in us, but for example, he's definitely got more fire in him. Uh, and I've got more earth in me. And so sometimes I'll be like, that's why I said out mm -hmm. of balance, because sometimes I'm like, you're pitta, which is a um, dosha of Ayurveda, mm -hmm. which is a way that you can um, you can determine your body type. And that con constitutes more of fire. So I'm like, your pitta is way off balance. We need to give you some serious earth or like some grounding because, um, or cooling he needs yes. a lot of. And so we actually, I actually have learned a lot about him through his elements, elemental composition. Cause I'm like, he's fiery. He needs this, this, and this in his life, whether it's environmental, whether it's food. Um, and for me, I'm kapha, which is more earth and water. So I know I actually need someone to like push me and drive me. I need fire under me or people yes. that are fiery around me. Mm -hmm. So I've actually learned a lot about him through that actually to learn the elemental composition of someone, which sounds crazy. I'm like, no, not I'm, at all. but no. yeah, it's, that's, it's us, really that's women helped. though. We're like, Ooh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we like figure it out and uh -huh. we're like, how can I use this? <laughs> and it kind of helps you to understand someone's nature deeply. Yes. Actually. And like the fun, everybody's fundamental nature is so different. And so actually if we, if we don't, figure that out and if we aren't able to see somebody's fundamental nature then actually we're ignoring such a huge part of them that actually yeah. we could be understanding and allowing their mishaps because of it it's not that like he has a right to be agitated for example but it makes me see okay cool like that's actually just him out of balance he's not being mean to me that's just him when he's in this situation that's what it causes so how can i how can i it, and both parties have to do that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's like he could be like, okay, she's feeling really anxious right now. How can I hold this space for her, her to be able to come out of that? How can I bring her out of that? And in the same way, he's feeling a little bit agitated right now. How can I hold the space so that I don't fuel it further? 
but I can actually help calm it down. Yes. And I think that's so important. Yeah. It's so we know our we know we know everybody that we're close to. We know their spots to push to to get them agitated or angry. And you know that's that's the hardest part. Actually, I think a lot about love and relationships is. And actually showing deep care for someone is even if I know your push points and even if I know how to make you angry, even when I'm so angry, let me not do that because out of love for you, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is that's slowly I've learned that that's actually such an integral part of whether it's a mother daughter relationship or a sister relationship or a r romantic relationship. Yeah. It's it's really important. And it's super like reactive. Like you were saying mm -hmm, how in yeah. New York it was like very reactive oh, and it, you're. Yeah. Also, I was thinking about the environment of New York, too. Sometimes oh, yes. it's like, and depending, <laughs> you really need like the earth and the grounding oh, as like kind of a support when you're in New York and it's hard to get. But it's like you have to make the effort to do that because I found myself to be very reactive very when reactive. I was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely got that energy. <laughs> totally. You mentioned, um, and we know this about you, just that you are so multi-talented and um, just interested in so many different things. And it's really cool to see um, I'm wondering if you ever feel challenged by like the ability to, to focus on one thing and, or channel mm -hmm. your creativity and how you do that. Um, well, I, I'd say when I first got to New York, which was maybe five years ago now, mm -hmm. I went through such a breakdown of really not knowing what I was good at. Like I had no idea what to do. I felt like I was seeing J60, which I was so excited about, but it then made me reflect on my skills. And I was like, what do I even have to give? And everything he was doing was giving back to so many people. And I was like, I need something in my life and I want something in my life where I feel whatever skill I have, I'm able to recognize it and I'm able to give it to other people. And I really struggled with that so much because I felt like I was just mediocre at everything. And I felt like I was like, oh, okay, cool, I'm okay. I was either mediocre or really, really, really bad at it. And I was like, well, how do I you know, figure that out. And I went through a sad phase where I was like, you know, I'm just not good at anything. Um, and then I realized that everybody has something. Like, mm -hmm. even if even if you don't realize it, you have to do the work to try and figure out what that was. And so I always loved health and nutrition. I actually studied as a, as a dietitian and nutritionist. Um, and then when I moved to New York, I actually just, everything that I've ended up doing has just been a very beautiful, magical, random interaction with someone that sparked something in me. Mm -hmm. So I met... Um, an Ayurvedic practitioner and uh, Ayurvedic chef called Divya in New York. And I just was like, I am obsessed with this human. I need to just study her and I need to just be around her. So I just became her assistant in her cooking classes. Wow. And yeah. I was just like, I just want to learn from you and absorb you and like in any way possible. So let me just follow you around and shadow you. So that's what I did. I helped her in her um, cooking classes. And then I went on to do a yoga teacher training there. So I'm a yoga teacher technically, but um, I've wow. never practiced it. Uh, I didn't actually end up end up following through with it, but it was the most beautiful way that I felt I found myself. Through that yoga teacher training, I found out so much about me, so many unhealed things that I had to deal with. Mm. Um, and at the same time, it made me so much more confident in who I was. And, mm. you know, I always used to, and I, I, at that point, it made me realize that you know, I, I've had so many points in my life where I felt jealous of other people or envious of other people. And I realized that actually that had nothing to do with them in any way. It had nothing to do with even what they were doing. It was me seeing someone have that spark of purpose and and happiness and joy through what they were doing. And I was like, it's not that I want to be them. It's not that I want to have what they have. It's that I want to feel that joy in myself and that like, that contentment in what in, in what I have to be able to give to other people. And I was like, wow, like that's actually such a beautiful feeling to know that, you know, jealousy actually for me comes or dis dissatisfaction comes when I don't understand who I am and I don't understand what I have to give to other people. And actually we all just want to give to other people. Mm -hmm. And the problem is if we don't know what we have to give, that's actually where the frustration for me came from. And I feel like that's probably for, for many people. Yes. Um, yeah. powerful and I don't know what the co what the what the question was no no you answered <laughs> it and I, I think too like to, to your point of like oh I did yoga teacher training but I, I didn't end up teaching but like you use that practice use I'm sure mm -hmm. every day yeah, I've so heard that much. so much with people with yoga teacher training they're like oh 
they didn't use it or they did it, but it was just profoundly transformational for, for them. It takes you through such a journey. Uh, what, what is that like? Because you said there was unhealed parts of you that it helped heal. Yeah. So I, um, a lot of it is to do with breath work. Like you do a lot of breath work practice in it. And actually, um, breath is so linked to your emotions. Mm -hmm. And actually it says that we have so much stagnant energy that let's say you go through something traumatic in your life. You end up, and if you don't process it, whether it is um, a loss or a breakup or whatever it is, you end up holding that in physical form in your body. Like energy is trapped in your, s there, there's different channels in your body. There's physical channels like our digestive tract and but then there are subtle energy channels in our body too. And it says that if we don't go through the healing process, then actually those things get trapped in different parts of us. And, I, and actually we feel that pain physically, but we also feel it emotionally. And then that trickles in. In, in Sanskrit, the word is samskaras, it's called. And that basically is almost like footprints that are left on you from past experiences, past, um, past anything that you've gone through leaves yeah. samskaras. And if you don't end up working through them, they get deeper and deeper. Mm. And so it really just helped me see parts of me that I really had to work on and that were really dark and that I really needed to, and I had so much, um, I, I really had very low kind of, um, self-worth maybe. Yeah, yeah. Very low self-worth growing up. And I knew it was purely based on, I, I grew up quite overweight when I was younger and, um, it made me realize that I had, yeah, I had so many doubts in myself from growing up. And, and I think the problem is sometimes when you have doubts about yourself physically it ends up seeping into how you feel about so many parts of you and I'm like that's yeah. so sad like I grew up and I was like that is so sad that I that I wasted so much of my and and everything happens for a reason but in hindsight I'm just like I feel like I wasted so much of my teenage life thinking that I just was not worthy and that seeped bec purely through physical and then that seeped into so many places in my life that I ended up at the age of 20 I don't know three in New York not ha having no clue about what I have to offer to people mm. because I had not appreciated anything about myself until that point. And I was like, wow, like we base it on, and obviously it's based on so many external things. And in, in, yeah. and, and, and yoga teacher training made me realize that actually all those external things, you know, even if I had a hundred people every single day telling me how amazing I was, how beautiful I was, how incredible my mind is, whatever, and if I didn't feel it, and if I wasn't able to appreciate certain things about myself, it would not make any difference. And that was really liberating too, because it's like, actually, that's what it was. It was liberating to know that every single thing that I allow to affect me and every single thing I feel about myself is purely and solely me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all me. And I was like, that is incredible. Mm -hmm. And that helped me so much, because I now am able to snap myself out of things so much faster. I'm able to recognize and spend time with myself enough. And that's another practice that yoga teacher training taught me, sit with myself. Until I moved to New York, I would have every single person in my life tell me, and I'd invite it, I'd want people because I didn't know what I wanted myself. Mm -hmm. I'd constantly want my mom to tell me what I wanted to do, my sister to pick things for me from like my cutlery that I want to buy to like <laughs> the wallpaper, like everything was made, was decisions that I would want everybody else to make for me because I was too lazy and I was unaware of the fact that I knew nothing about myself mm -hmm. um, and I wanted everybody else to tell me it. And so yoga teacher training taught me so much, but those were some of the, it was the most incredible life-changing thing that I did wow. for sure. Super powerful. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. You're so, you're so confident, like, but in a way that is like very much, um, I think to your point of like, just knowing it yourself, like you mm -hmm. don't, it's not that like things are validating, validating you necessarily. And then you become confident, but it, are there like daily practices that you have that just support that? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I mentioned that we were moving around a lot and I really needed an anchor for mm. me because I felt that wherever I was going, um, everything was changing around me. Everything, like the place would change, the place we were living would change. I didn't have anything that was constant. With you and, and Jay, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Or, yeah, whenever we were traveling yep, around. Yep. Um, and I, the only thing that stayed constant for me was my meditation practice, mm -hmm. which I could do anywhere, anytime. Um, but I, I love having a routine. I've always loved having, you know, a specific thing that I'm doing at different times of the day. And so for me, my my daily practice is I usually wake up around 5.30ish and then um, I boil my water because I have a little um, digestive and detox tea in the morning um, and then I sit down for my meditation practice which usually is about an hour and a half 
Um, but I built up to that. Like I, I started in 2012. And at that time, I was like, you know what? If I, I, I started hearing about meditation, my mom used to, my mom actually, I used to wake up to my mom praying every single morning. Like mm -hmm. she's been very spiritual growing up. So is my grandma. And it was always a beautiful practice, but I never really connected to it. I really just saw it as more of like a religious thing. Um, and as much as I appreciated it, I didn't have a deep connection to it because I hadn't invested time in it. Right. And so when I did, it was after my first, it was after university, after college, came back home. And I started going to the, the temple that was close to me where everybody would meditate in the mornings. And I made a decision that for at least 30 days, I was going to go there every single morning and just participate in the meditation that they did in the morning. And that would be me waking up at like 4.30 in the morning and getting there for, oh no, yeah, getting there for 4.30 in the morning. And 30 days went by and I did it every single day before work. I would go there, be there from 4.30 to 7 a.m., go home, change for work and go to work. And every single day I did that for 30 days. And then I was like, you know what, let me keep going. So I did it for about a year, a year and a half. And it was the most, it was incredible because I feel like with meditation as with anything else, for example, if you want to become an Olympian, if you want to do it, you're going to have to, you just have to pour yourself into it to really feel the benefits of it, to really feel the like spark and magic of it. And, and once I did those 30 days, I was just like hooked. And I was like, I need to feel this. And I want to feel this constantly. And it just became part of me. And I, I, and I would feel if, if I didn't do it, the, the difference in my heart. And I, was, I call it a bhakti bubble, actually. Bhakti in Sanskrit means love. And um, I found that my, if my meditation practice is strong and it's good, mm -hmm. it almost forms like a bubble around me of how I react to things, how I perceive things how I interact with people, the person that they receive, the, me as a person that they receive is far better when I've had my meditation practice. Mm, and totally. so that's something that I've held on to, not only for myself, because there are so many days where I wake up and I'm like, oh, just lie in, like you should just sleep, like it's okay. And then I'm like, no, because this really does make me a better person for other people. And I think that pushes me even more. It's like, I know I'm snappier. I've got a worst relationship with people around me if I don't do it bottom line and so yeah. I'm like well it has to be something I do so that's definitely a ritual hour and a half is pretty baller wow. that is, is baller and just silence um no I do mantra meditation oh, you do so I do breath work beforehand or yeah. before and after I'll do breath work um but bulk of it is mantra meditation wow and the reason I actually tried many many different types of meditation but the reason I love mantra is because you know our senses are so wanting to be stimulated yeah. and I find that if my meditation practice has um, a, a deeper focus where all of my senses are being are being absorbed into it so that way with mantra we also hold beads like I hold beads while I'm chanting or meditating and so the mantra that I'm saying I'll also use beads counting the mantras so that's my touch my mouth so I'm listening to the mantra as well I'm speaking mm -hmm. and then I'll have like a smell that's familiar to my meditation practice whether it's incense or a specific um, um, what's it called? essential oil that I'll put on so all my senses are very very absorbed into this one practice it just leaves less room to wonder mm -hmm. and I find that you know sacred mantras are so powerful they've been spoken for so many years by so many incredible people and I really connected to it when I when I started doing it and I found that it has melody in it and it's got so much depth words have are so powerful like words hold so much energy and sometimes silence I found for me I love silence too but, but in terms of connecting deeper to myself, I found mantra was more powerful. It says that mantras have a cleansing effect on your soul and on your heart, and they help you really dig deeper. And so I found silent versus mantra was, was a much more powerful mantra was for me. Mm. What's the mantra? The mantra is Hare Krishna. Have you heard it? It's Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare. Cool. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare, Hare. It's actually just three words, Hare, Krishna, and Rama. And so um, Hare is basically inviting female energy. Um, Krishna means all attractive. So everything that's like all attractive. And ah. it's also another word for God. So there are so many names of God, but Krishna is one of them. And uh, Rama is uh, tr directly translated as like reservoir of pleasure. So it's all talking about let everything that is just mm. the sweetest, the kindest, the most loving thing just come to me and open me up and open mm. my heart. Um, and it's just a, it's a mantra for surrender. It's a mantra for opening your heart and soul to 
just anything really, but just just really cleansing. It's meant to be a very cleansing mantra, love and that. I've definitely felt the effect. I love that. Yeah. And then last one on your thing. What's in the detox tea? Oh, the detox tea. Okay, I've actually, I literally just, uh, I've been speaking about this so much lately because it's done wonders for me. It's cumin, coriander, and fennel seeds. Um, so it's equal parts of all three. And you boil it in water for about five minutes. And throughout the day, I actually just keep refilling. So those seeds will be at the bottom of my pan. Mm. And I'll just keep refilling water into it. And I'll drink it during the day. Um, you know, herbs and spices have such incredible effects on the body. And I always talk about my spice box as being my medicine box. Because I truly believe, having grown up in an Indian family, it's been the base of so many things. And I've literally not really used medication my whole life. I've, I've been purely through nature hope like and I hope to say that way but you know that's how I've been so far and I think you know if we learn the benefits of spices and herbs we are we have these things which are not expensive that are pure and natural that can really really enhance support and nourish our bodies but um, cumin coriander fennel are seen to be tree doshic in Ayurveda which means um, all, good for all body types and they're seen to cleanse detox um, and purify on a subtle level. But if you're having them every day, they really have that effect. Wow. That That's just, cool. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Do you, since we're on herbs, yeah. do you use them outside of the body too? Do you like make, because your skin is so beautiful, um, your <laughs> hair. <laughs> I'm like, what are, you, what are we using? <laughs> I, <laughs> well, there are, in Ayurveda, it talks about um, ajas foods. Ajas means vitality. Mm. So it's all about... Um, Imagine like all the foods and, and, and activities that you could be doing to increase the vitality and nourishment in your body that nourishes your cells so deeply that it provides that glow, the, the thick hair, the healthy skin, whatever it is that you feel you look your best in. There's mm -hmm. also specific foods for that. So um, definitely herbs and spices are in that category. And I just try and keep everything very simple. Like yeah. simplicity is really beautiful, especially with food. And so... You know, lots of the fresher, the better. There's another word um, that's called prana, which means um, life force. And prana is in food. Imagine like the best fruit and vegetables that you can get are the ones that you pick from your garden and you eat. So let's say you don't have that, but still try and go as fresh as possible because that's when the, the food has its most vitality. So if you have a choice of having... I don't know, canned peaches instead of a fresh peach. Eat a fresh peach. The nutrients are far superior in that than it's going to be in something that's canned or frozen. Mm. Um, and so I do try and keep to my pranic foods. High pranic foods are just so important. Um, and in terms of external, um, again, I just try and keep it natural. I use oils. I use mm. things with like five ingredients or less, you know, in them. And I make my own face masks. Something with like avocado and like turmeric and... Yeah. But I really think it. there's only so much you can put externally. It has to be a lot more of what you're feeding your cells and your bodies to deeply nourish them. Totally. I think yeah. especially for skin. Especially for you skin. Know. Yeah. I remember one time I was getting a facial somewhere and I said something and she's like, basically was like, oh no, you know, what you eat doesn't matter for your skin. I was like, you what? I know. <laughs> and I was like, what, I don't mate? know if I'm at the right place right <laughs> now. Ask for me. There's this really amazing book actually called, um, I think it's called Absolute Beauty. It's by someone called Pratima something. I'll send it to mm -hmm. you guys. But it's all about, it's Ayurvedic skincare, mm -hmm. but it is just everything that you've got in your house, like every herb, every spice, like how it can really nourish your body from the outside too. But it's a beautiful book. Wow. Yeah. And with that, when you were talking to about you being like an overweight child, we can totally relate. Yeah. Um, so how did, you know, so knowing that and then going into the Ayurvedic space and cooking and food, like, was that healing for you or what was that journey to heal that part of you? Well, when I first started um, thinking about losing weight, I was probably in my teens. I One thing I knew for sure is I didn't want to do it in an unhealthy way. I didn't want to diet crazily. I didn't want to... More so because I read into it of how it can really affect your body. And like, you know, f crash dieting actually ruins your metabolism so deeply. And it can, not only that, it's your organs, your reproductive organs, everything. It has such a negative effect on it. Mm -hmm. And so I knew from the beginning I didn't want to do that. And so I just started learning about food. And and that's how I ended up. And my, my mom was an incredible cook. Like she she cooked the most, she always, she still does, cooks the most incredible food. Very nourishing, very hearty. Uh, vegetables, lentils, like I grew up vegetarian. So for me, I had so many fresh ingredients constantly around me that my mum used to use. Um, and so I was lucky enough to grow up in a, in a place where food was quite healthy growing up and, and I appreciated it and I really loved it too. Um, 
But then honestly, I just, I've always loved the combination of, I grew up in London, but I have an Indian background. And so really merging the two has been something which I've done a lot in my recipes. And I love that so much. Like, you know, we're used to having burgers and whatever, but let me try and infuse a bit of, um, you know, Eastern culture into it too. So instead I'll do like a spiced uh, pot- sweet potato burger with like chutneys and and mm. uh, aromatic herbs and whatever it is like I really enjoy doing that from a young age and so at university I would cook for all of my flatmates um, and yeah I think Ayurveda though taught me that and so has actually in the different ways that I've been working out that I feel so much that health is so much more about how you feel and really tuning into your body than it is about how you look because I remember going to so many classes and after I started really practicing Ayurveda and started understanding my body better and what strength really feels like to me and health feels like to me, I would go to like a Barry's boot camp, for example, and I'd see someone who was much smaller than me and also someone who was much more muscular, than, like much more, uh, much bigger than me. Mm-hmm. And I realized that like it, it, visually you can never tell someone's health or strength. Yeah. And so I would be able to outrun someone who like looks far leaner than me or I w- and and that was what was really cool because I was like all body types are so different and so unique and so wonderful and trends just come and go like the wind constantly. And so I was just it just it really made me appreciate my body so much more yeah. and appreciate what I thought were flaws as not being flaws at all like flaws don't have to we don't have to think of anything about ourselves yeah. as flaws. Yeah. You just have to think and as soon as you change your perspective in that way you just learn to appreciate it. And that doesn't mean you can't work on yourself to, to become fitter or healthier or change your body. But um, just understanding like where that lies in your self-esteem or self-worth is what's important, I feel. Yeah, like how yeah. you define it. How do you, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Love yeah. that. I'm curious like what, how you feel about Instagram? Because yeah. I freaking love you on Instagram. <laughs> yes. And like speaking to, you know, the trends and just seeing, mm-hmm. you know, a certain body type and you're like, oh my God, I need to, I need to work out or eat a certain way to be like that. And I think thankfully, like, I don't know, I, this is a, a blanket statement, but in my thirties, I'm like, I'm cool yeah. with, what, w- with how I feel. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there's just kind of this, this settling into yourself mm. that happens, I think a little bit later, but um, yeah, I'm curious, like what your experience is with such a big platform. Yeah. You know, I, can definitely say that I had gone through that feeling, especially when you move to like America. I don't know for us, as soon as you move country or something, you're like, oh my gosh, you see all these different types of people and the glam and all of that. But I think, you know, as 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 dangerous as Instagram can be, I think that now there are so many people coming out that are really promoting just being yourself like so many people coming out and just being and by that I mean they are very transparent with you know they they come on without makeup and I think that's a big deal and I know that sounds so lame but it's a big deal because otherwise people genuinely believe you look like that all the time um and I think there are plenty of ways that you can go down a very negative rabbit hole but the way I stopped it is like every time I would go through my feed and I'd see something that I find triggers me in a negative way. I'm just like, do I really need, like, I don't need to be following this. Mm-hmm. Do I want to be following someone that I feel has an unattainable body body type that I think that I want? No. So let me just remove that from my feed. Let me just remove that from, I think it's perfectly okay to remove things that don't serve you in a positive way. Um, and if that means you mute them, if, if, they're, if they're your friends, then that's okay. Just mute them. Like, that's fine for you to do that. You may not ha- want to delete them. But to really remove those things that make you feel negatively about yourself is important. But at the same time, it's important for you to work on yourself as well so that you're able to come, because you can't just live in a bubble. Mm -hmm. And so I actually think that, and actually I think confidence is purely that. It's being comfortable in your own skin. Like it's not about, it's not about you being able to go. I used to think confidence was like going up. I used to see people going up on stage and being so, like so comfortable. And I used to be like, wow, I want to be that confident. Or I used to see see people showing so much skin on their body, whatever body Mm. type, and I'd be like, I wish I was that comfortable or like, I wish I was that confident with my body. And then I realized that actually confidence is comfort. Like how comfortable do you feel? It's like what you said, how comfortable are you settling in to who you are? Mm -hmm. And as soon as you feel that, I'm like, then you see people, and sometimes you see people walking into a room and it's their confidence and their comfort level of themselves that attracts you to them. 
more than anything else about them, more than their it's fashion, the more than mm-hmm. how they look. It's like they look so comfortable in who they are. And that is actually so much more attractive. It's true. Yeah, that's like the it's dream. True. That is the For dream. so many people just to be comfortable. And I think you put made such an important point is like, you know, when you see something that triggers you, like the body type and you're able to mute it, it's just so important too to like, always be curious about exploring the trigger too yes. while you're muting that exactly. you know it's like you not having the one side of it because I think it's so true like with the bubble and I think I you know I've seen that a lot as like a trend where it's like unfollow the people mute the people remove the people on you know whatever remove that toxicity from their from your lives which you should remove toxicity from your life but you can't always just go through life removing things that are triggering. The no. wound will always be there. Exactly. And the wound is like magnifying sometimes. As you know, it'll always find you. something. Yes. Yeah. 100%. As, as much as other, because people can live their lives how they want. If people want to post pictures like that and if people want to ch- like have bodies in that way, then then they should be able to. That's their choice. And so we have to be able to like either we are happy, we, we find a way to deal with that and looking at it shouldn't trigger us, in which case we need to do the work. Or, or you mute it and you go on with your life. But at some point, that's going to end up affecting you in a negative way anyway. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess it just always comes back to you. Mm-hmm. Like, that's always. the scary part. When you realize that, it's also like, okay, I can't blame anyone anymore. Literally. Fine. <laughs> that's what I was <laughs> going like, to say when you bye. said that earlier. I'm like, it's empowering, but also you're like, oh. Oh, God, it's my fault. Go yes, now. everything. You're like, oh, my gosh. It gets exhausting. Sometimes I'm like, wow, victim mentality is kind of fun. It's so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, want, I want to sit in that for a bit. Yes. Yeah. You're like, can I have this moment with, like, myself? But I think it's a constant thing. It's like, I don't I don't ever feel like I've reached, like, oh, now I feel like I'm so confident. Because there's always things that, you know, things will always knock your confidence. Yes. And I still have so many areas of my life I have to settle into about my myself and and really understand so much more and so I actually think yeah I think confidence can be knocked and you can you can fall down but you know with with that as soon as you start investing in yourself more you find you're able to pick yourself up just a little bit more faster a little bit faster you can get yourself back up faster and I think that's the bounce back is you know a shorter period of time uh which I think is is the goal yeah yeah Always, always love that. I wanted to talk about friendships too, yeah. like your friendships and maybe how your friendships have evolved. You know, I think for us, we've been talking a lot about like female friendships mm. and the importance of female friendships and how close you can be with females, but also how sometimes they can be the most painful, you know, because you get so deeply intimate. And I think with relationships, if you're in a monogamous relationship, it's like you're only going to end up with one. So, of course, you're going to have breakups and heartbreaks. But friends, you can kind of have a lot of women or, you know, if you're a man, man in your life that are close to you. So what has been your experience with female relationships? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Growing up, I genuinely felt like I have had breakups, like as deeper breakups, as deep as I would feel in a breakup. Like that's how I felt about my friendships. Same. And um, I've had so many of them because I felt like I deeply invested myself into that mm-hmm. friendship or relationship. But I have to say, when I reflect back at myself in those friendships or relationships, um, I think a lot of it is you end up wanting that person. Like, you know, when you're younger, you're like, I need to know everything about you. You have to tell me everything about you. We need to share everything. And the more, and as as sweet as that can be, you also can have different friends for different things. You also can have a connection with somebody that's just as sweet and just as loving and just as wonderful, like as, as you can have two friends with the same love for both of them and it doesn't diminish the love for the other. Um, I think I, I, when you're younger, it's always like, I have to have one best friend mm-hmm. and that one best <laughs> friend has to stay my best friend forever. Mm-hmm. And you have to keep all my secrets. And you know, you're like 12, it, you're like, you're going to be my maid of honor. Exactly. <laughs> and, and the more I grew up, the more, and I used to be very invested in like, okay, it's my job. If my friend is doing something wrong, I should tell them. And it's my mm. job to do that. And it's my job to solve their problems. And it's my job to call them out on stuff and as I grew up and as I and that's the same with my sister with my mom like that's how I used to feel and actually I realized that that's such a selfish mentality and I also realized that it's a very controlling dominating Mm. mentality that can actually suffocate a lot of people and now when I look at my relationships as they've changed and grown through me observing myself in that way I realize that actually the closest friendships I have are ones where I hold space for whoever they are like whatever mistakes they make, whatever they do, it's actually actually the closest friendships for me have been the ones where we allow each other to be who we are. Mm. We don't impose our own values, our own ways that we think things should be done. 
And that's been the nicest, like most simple friendships. And I think simplicity in friendships is actually what's needed. I've been through so many friendships where it's been like drama all the time, drama. Yeah. Yeah. And it's partly to do with me for sure. But I think it's 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 been because we are we think that when we are friends with someone, when we're in a relationship with someone, we have some sort of a control over them or that we feel we have the right to say this, or we have the right to say something to them. And I think when you kind of strip all of that away and you just hold space for people and you allow people to be who they are and, and love them for that, mm. that's actually how I found my relationships have flourished so much more. Yeah, super powerful. It's funny when you're younger, I was thinking, I always think about that like in high school, it's like <laughs> you felt like it was your job. You're like, I just needed to tell you that yes. like, I don't think he's the right fit for you. Yes. And you would just give your opinion on everything. You're like, I... Even in college, too. And get so mad when they don't. So when mad. When they don't take my advice, mm -hmm. I'd be like, Same. Well, well, then why? Like, why did you yes. ask me? <laughs> yes. Why did you ask me? Well, you're not going to do you're it like, anyway. Like, it's just getting old. I have to give you the same advice. It's like, exactly. I remember I had a friend I was really close with, and we were actually outside of college, and I was so invested in her relationship. There was like this toxic relationship with someone, and I was so deeply invested. It was so draining. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, this is not helping her because now. I'm so invested that she would end up hiding stuff. Yeah. Oh, I, I had the same thing. Of yeah. course, people yeah. do that all the time. You know, it's like they're hiding because then they don't want to tell you. And I was like, this isn't creating a good environment for mm -hmm. either of us where she can openly share with me and I can be there for her. And, you know, it's just I think women, we just love so much and we want the best. And then there's also that little part of us that's like a little controlling. Oh, yeah. you know, yes. that's like a little bit like you guys should do this. You should do that. But that is so relatable. But I think controlling also comes from the feeling of wanting someone to need you. Yes. Like, I always, I know that oh, so much. Yeah. My mum was always Facts. like, you've always been such an agony aunt for your friends. And I'm like, when Thank I look back you. at it. <laughs> yeah, and, but when I look back at it, I'm like, actually, that doesn't say anything. At, that doesn't, it, it's actually not a positive thing about me. What it is, is I always want to help solve things. And yes. I realize that that comes from a deep need of me wanting to be needed and wanting to be wanted. For so sure. Whatever, like, okay, cool, you just have to <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. I get, yeah. That was our crowd just timing in. Oh. Anyway, keep, um, we can start. We can keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry um, about that. Yeah. No, I just think it's, yeah, it definitely comes from a place of, and that's another thing about confidence, right? You end up feeling like you need, you get your confidence or your self esteem from people needing yes. or wanting you. Yeah. And, um, and it that gives can you be something dangerous. to do. Like it was yeah. like, I needed to get a life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like exactly. What am I doing when I'm like, so, you know, it was just like, th there was like a codependency there. And focusing and on other people. Yes. Means you don't have to focus yes. on you. Exactly. That's what I'm That's the whole say. thing. That's, that's so much easier. Oh, yes. well, let me solve your problems yes. because you've done something so bad, but I don't want to acknowledge what I've done. So mm. let's talk about you. Yes. <laughs> this it's isn't about so me. True. <laughs> yeah. So true. It's so true. Um, I'm curious if you have like any mentors mm. or... Um, I don't even know if I like the word mentors, but just like anyone that you admire, whether you know them or, or know them from afar or any books. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody that I connected to um, when I first started my like spiritual journey is someone called Radhanath Swami. Mm -hmm. um, he has been a mentor before I even met him. I fell in love with his words and the way that he spoke about spirituality, the way that he spoke about connecting to yourself, um, I read the book, The Journey Home, mm. and it was a very, very powerful book. Um, and I don't want to give too much away because I really feel people should read it. It really helps you go through your own journey. Um, and so he has been someone that I have, yeah, connected to. And luckily, I've, I've, I also get to spend a lot of time with him now because I go to India where his um, he has like a retreat center there that he... Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful space. So I, I go and spend time with him there. When he comes to America, I get to see him and spend time with him too. But he has been an incredible spiritual figure for me. And more so just because I've seen the way that he lives his life. And I'm like, wow. Like, you know, when you meet people and you're like, this is, if this is how they live, I need to do everything that they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I felt. And he was just so genuine and someone that really speaks what they live. Uh, yeah, speaks lives lives what, what they, they speak. speak. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's very rare these days and you yeah. feel that when someone I feel really that with does you that, guys you, you and jay i felt that with Truly. you i was like oh this is true yeah you know which is powerful oh yeah so many mistakes on the way but try i think everybody's just trying yeah. right yes if you want to try to to live your authentic self but seeing someone who does do that 
like, wow, mm -hmm. like that's a special person. So him, and then I spoke about Divya, who is my Ayurvedic teacher. She also has a um, Ayurvedic restaurant in New York. I will always be grateful Ooh. to her because she introduced me What's to it Ayurveda. Called? It's called Divya's Kitchen. Oh. It's amazing. Um, and she also has a book out, which is um, What to Eat for How You Feel. A great start to your Ayurvedic journey. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think what else. I read a lot of uh, spiritual books, so I can definitely give you. Oh, you do? Yeah. Tell us more. Yeah, I do. I um, So I studied the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. I tried to read it. I couldn't do it. You know, I, I to go always tell again. people that it's a book which... For me, now that I've understood it, it definitely feels like it's a life guide. Mm -hmm. But I always recommend, like, just as we would do, just as we would, like, if we want to study math, we have a math teacher. In the same way, it's like when we, with spiritual books and spiritual texts, it's really good to have a guide while you're reading through it. It's really good to have someone who has read it, who has understood it, who can really help guide us through it because... Mm -hmm. It's, it's literally the same. I always talk about it in that way because I'm like, if you want to learn something or you want to master something, you have a teacher, you have a guide, you have a mentor for it. And so when I first read the Bhagavad Gita, I was like, ah, like yes. I, 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 all these people. Like, I always think of Return to Love, Marian Williamson, about yes. Course in Miracles. So oh. it's like, here's this, and then you know you can get into it, same with that, and then really get into Course in Miracles once you understand like what's going on. Exactly. And so I think that it's something... With Bhagavad Gita, I always recommend. I studied it. So I had literally, I did a six-month course on it. Wow. Cool. And so I felt like I understood it so much better. Now when I'm reading through it, I've got that depth of knowledge to yes. understand where, you know, what I'm supposed to be understanding from it. Um, and so the Bhagavad Gita and then, yeah, Radhanath Swami has another book called The Journey Within, which is the sequel to The Journey Home. But that's wonderful. It's an incredible book um, full of conversations that he's had and just life lessons that you just need to have in your life. Like just, you know, anything that reminds me of how to become a better person, mm -hmm. I am all for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and yeah, those are the books that I've, that I constantly go back to read. And right now I'm reading some Ayurveda books, but they're a bit more like, I'm such a, I like being a nerd. I love reading about like science and Ayurvedic stuff. So I'm reading that. stuff to do with that. And I'm reading a book called Surrender, which is by um, another Indian Swami. Um, it's called Surrender Bhakti Tirta Swami. His name is, but it is such an incredible, I've been posting about it so much on my Instagram lately mm -hmm. and people are just connected to the world so oh. much because it's, you know, it's going through topics of like humility, jealousy, envy, um, confidence, mm -hmm. anger, and really breaking it down and, and understanding where it stems from. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I read a lot of that stuff, I was like, oh, wow. Like it makes you go there, which really? I, I like books like What's that. an example of one of those? Like jealousy, envy, confidence. Yeah, oh my gosh, do you want me to post a photo? Yes, yes. please. Screenshots. I'm really excited about this. Okay, let me show I need you. some new spiritual mm -hmm. text. So, so sorry. So, Bhagavad Gita. Did you? What was there a text that helped you understand it? Is that yeah, the journey? So there, there are no. So the journey okay. home is separate. Okay. So there are um, other books as well that kind of give you. Um, there's one book called. I'm gonna give it to you. I can't remember exactly, but it's literally like a small book like this. Yeah. But each chapter goes through like an acronym of what the, the chapter stands for. Love it. Which is phenomenal. So I'll definitely give you that. It's like Bhagavad Gita for dummies. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay. Okay, so this is one part of it. Acknowledging that, okay. Acknowledging that the false ego is part of our consciousness. Now we need to question ourselves constantly about the source of our behavior. Ask yourself, are my actions motivated by a desire for fame and adoration? Or are they motivated by a longing to be fully present for another? Do my words stem from a hidden need to make the best arrangements for my own comfort? Or do they come from a genuine desire to make the best connection with another person? Mm. Mm. So that was one of the pieces. Uh, but there are so many like good nuggets like that where, oh, let me do one from about envy and jealousy because that was such a good one. Um, it's so funny. I could never see you being jealous. Everyone is. Yes. Everybody yeah. is. But it's yeah. funny. I could never see you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've definitely curbed it. Now, I used to do this thing where anytime I felt it or anytime, you know, when you see someone, you're like, oh, you look so beautiful. But your mind's kind of like, oh, God, I don't know if I look like that. <laughs> I didn't like having that feeling. Like, yeah. I really wanted to speak what I was feeling. Um, and I wanted what I was feeling to be a good thing. For sure. And so I used to have these every time I had conversations like that when I was going through my that phase of my life. I would come home and I would write down how my mind had that conversation and uh, how I had that conversation, what I said out loud and what my mind was thinking. And then next to it, I would write down 
what I wish my mind was thinking and what I mm. want my mind to eventually think. And genuinely, it trained my mind so well. And eventually, it, it ended up making me feel that way. And so every time now I end up having any conversation, which now I feel like is a lot rarer than it was before, but that practice is what helped me get out of it. I'll be like, this is what your mind was thinking. Like, but this is what I want it to be thinking mm. when I am saying those words. I want it to be real. Yes. Um, let me read you one more bit. Yes, please. Normally, people are not ready to help another. If they do help, they will only make the effort if it does not inconvenience them. They will assist only if it will not disturb their own egocentricity and individuality. Then they can tolerate the idea of extending themselves and giving their mercy to them, as, as and when they desire. Or they can tolerate the idea of giving their subordinates giving to their subordinates because it reinforces their own position of superiority. Enviousness means focusing on what is constantly happening to me, for me, by me, and about me. Within this paradigm of you has very little, within this paradigm, you has very little significance to me. Only if you are bothering me in some way does the I pay attention. Wow. Uh, you need to read it again, but it's That's really good. Huge. Yeah, wow. I, I, it's so true. It's like, I always think, of, and when I read, I've read a few bits like that. When I read it, I was like, it's so true. You are so happy supporting and giving to somebody when you feel like they're below you. But as soon as you feel like they're catching up to you, as soon as they're like in your rear view mirror <laughs> and you're like, oh, they're <laughs> catching up. Like, or, or they're getting attention for the same thing I yes. am. It's like, hell no, I'm not going to help them. Yes. And that's the problem, right? It's like, that's we feel like it's not out of ego. We, th we do it because it feeds our ego. But actually, we think we're helping other people. And that's why it's so important to be so aware of helping this person. Because I genuinely, would I be comfortable with this mm. person overtaking me in what I'm doing? Like, because sometimes support does that. Sometimes yes. you can help someone and it might push them to a point where it, where it um, you know, where it outruns you. Yes. But that's also okay. And I think that's the point. Like, when we're helping people, we shouldn't fool ourselves into believing we're truly helping from the kindness of our heart if actually we're not doing it for that reason. And Completely. I think that was a huge revelation for me. I was like, yeah, it's so true. Wow. If I'm helping you, am I helping you for me to feel cool and to feel like I'm doing something? But mm. secretly I'm thinking, I'm going to help you up till this point. And I'm done. Like <laughs> wow, yeah. I learned that so, like in LA, especially, which sounds like it wouldn't happen here. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we just have such a, a really solid group of friends who are all in their own right really um successful in different yeah. ways and I think like normally it would kind of make me feel a certain way I think like quote-unquote like old Lin Lindsay would kind of feel like huh are you all damn, in the same space kind of different like Some, same ish yeah. but like doing different things yeah. and it just it always feels so good to support without the strings you know yes. what I mean it's just like damn, I'm so proud of you. Like, mm -hmm. how can I yeah. share what you're doing? Or how can we, you know, it's, it, it is this kind of like village mentality of yes. like, yo, if you are successful, like that also like brings us. joy to my yeah. life. And, and yes, it, it, it benefits all of us. So I just think that's so powerful. Like, and, but also too, like for me to really get to a place where I genuinely support people, I had to be right with like my Yes. what you're doing yes like that's, that's sure. once I found my thing I was like it allowed me to support people exactly. in such a deeper way and just truly mean it and yeah. just be like whatever you need because I'm good you know but I'm that's good what here. it is right yes. it's like as soon as you find your strength and your power then nobody else's power will diminish yours yes. because you felt it like you know what you are giving yeah. to other people I feel the same way about LA LA is probably the first place I feel like I found such a incredible group of friends oh. that are all in so many different fields and right. doing so many different things but are killing it and in their own way um and it's so amazing to see everybody support each other and you're right it's without strings attached it's not like mm -hmm. if you post me i'm gonna post you mm -hmm. like it's yeah. not about that <laughs> completely that yeah. is my yeah. hell <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's weird yeah i feel i i didn't think that about i didn't think i would get that in la mm. you know and no yeah everybody's so surprised when i say that about la i know same so surprised yeah. i didn't i don't think i would have found it m maybe in new york I, I wasn't doing what i wanted to do in new york but same. i feel like we've attracted that you yeah. know because i think there could be the other but i really think the key thing is is finding yes. your strengths and what you're passionate about and really why at the moment your purpose is to be here. Mm -hmm. You're standing in your power. Yes. And then everybody else, like, and that also allows people, because I always find sometimes, I don't know whether you felt this before, but 
when you're around people who sometimes I feel I can't be who I completely am around people who I feel maybe haven't found it. Yes. Because not because I think that they're like, not even because I'm thinking of their jerseys, because I'm like, oh crap, I don't yes. want to talk about this because it just feels like I'm just, you know, with the people that I that I feel I've found that that are on the same page as me, I feel like I could talk about everything and then never be like, oh, she's being she's being big headed or she's boasting. And I, and I would never talk like that either. But I'm able to express the things that I'm doing and and the joys that I'm getting out of the the, totally. the wins that I've had in my life without feeling like they're judging me in like a superficial way because they also have had their wins. And so sometimes when you end up being friends or having friendships which are I don't know how to explain it. Do you I know, know yes, what I mean? I literally know exactly what yes. you mean. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Very I think clear. about that all the time. Like there was our friends are so successful and every time we hang out, it's so positive and everyone's like, I'm doing this. I'm excited about this. This is amazing. And, you know, I've had a, a few months this year that have been so hard and it's almost like I had to check in and be like, oh, I actually don't want to talk to my friends because they're doing so well. Right. And I was like, oh, man, I feel like I'm that person that's bringing in the negativity when everyone's right. so successful. But I totally know what you mean whenever I'm home or with people, you know, from where I grew up, I'm like, I mean, I shouldn't do this, but I dim, I dim the oh, light. Oh, dim, the that's light. what I mean. Yeah. I dim. Yeah, I'm like, because sure. I feel like if I was like to someone that would have been me, you know, hey, you could do what you love and live where you love and have friends that you love. It's like, no, you know, yeah. or just like that it would be hurtful because maybe they don't have that. Hurtful. That's what it is. And I think that's important as well to be really aware of who you're speaking to and, yeah. and how it could affect them with the words that you're saying. And yeah. I, I believe that. It, and as much as it feels like it's dimming your light, it's also avoiding one of the key messages of like a yogic practice. It always talks about how you should speak so that you ne never speak to agitate someone like and, and be aware of what will agitate other people. And so if you feel like your words are going to agitate them in some way or unnerve them in some way, hold back. Like mm, just yes. hold back and, and hold those words in. And, and I, I believe in that too. I think everybody has their own struggles. Yes. And if you find your friends are having those struggles, then be easy on that mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just respecting them. their path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was fun. This was so fun. This oh, man. Fabulous. I'm so grateful. You're so cool. <laughs> oh, you are. You That's a cool so beauty. Wonderful. I'm so happy. I, we talked about, like, everything I yes. loved and am happy we talked about. So thank you so much. Okay. Last question. What are you excited about this year? Like, what do you have going on? What can everyone look forward to from you? Um, okay. So I have, I, you know what? Quarantine has been, like, my most constructive and productive time cool um so i have my new website coming out i have a website with Beautiful. recipes on it but i have a new one coming out that's more accessible and easy to use um i have my youtube videos coming out which i'm so excited about because it allows me to really um share so much more knowledge that i've had about ayurveda and ingredients and food and spices so that and then I also have this necklace coming out. I oh. literally was like going to ask you when we're done where you got that. Yes. You made you. Yes. So we have, um, it's actually coming out next, uh, it in is the next two weeks. So beautiful. So we've got green one. We're going to have a rose quartz one too, but this wow. is Chriso Praise and I absolutely love it. I connected with this stone. Uh, it's not jade. What's ago. it? Chriso Praise? No, Praise. Oh, what is the. So um, it's basically a f to open your heart chakra. So it's all to do oh. with like, um, dealing with negative feelings, but also giving out positivity, just everything just sweet. And I, I, I was attracted to, it. I went to this really cool rustic um, shop once when we were traveling and they had this like this pendant. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I need this. And that was the only one I was attracted to. Mm. And then since then I've worn it nonstop. Um, and then I was like, you know, I was trying to find one everywhere because everyone was asking me for it. And I was like, you know what, let me just make it. Mm. So I made one and it's going to be out uh, in two weeks time. So it'll be out in at least latest by October. I cannot wait. I, wow. You guys, it is, anyone who's listening, it is so beautiful. It's like this <laughs> thin, delicate gold chain and this beautiful stone, like the perfect size, everything. I love it. Yeah, I'm going to send you guys Please, one. Please, yes. Really? Yes. Cool. That was really me asking for uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. a free <laughs> necklace. I'm like, I love them in both colors. I can't yes. wait for the <laughs> second one. That's amazing. All right, thank Thanks you so much. Thank this you. was so fun. We'll yeah. see you guys on the next one.